everyone so today i want to show you one of the three sizes that i did in my live stream recently and um, so this is the square um version or the four-way easy pinwheel card um and so this one i use papers from antonio makes these are called lavender and citrus um and i did this card because i had a request from i think it was crafty lady 11 i think um and she'd bought a die um from somebody and it literally it just it was just a rectangle with a score line but there was not really much instructions the video that went with it wasn't that helpful um because it was all speeded up there was no voiceover on it um so yeah so i've just made my own panel i don't have that die so i've just made my own panel and i'm going to show you how i put it together i'm going to do these three sizes all as separate videos because obviously somebody might want to watch the square but they're not bothered about hexagonal etc so i'm going to do them all separate Okay, so we're going to start with this one. Um, these dies here as well were from, I think they were tonic dies. I'm pretty sure they were tonic dies. Um, I got them again from the pa Papercraft Fair at the National M Motorcycle Museum in Birmingham. Okay, so for the square one, you are going to need, and I am using papers again from Antonio Makes today, you're going to need some base card. You're going to need four base pieces that are four inches by six inches. Um, the other thing I want to do as well in this one is just show you different ways of doing it. Instead of just having it like square corners, you could round your corners. So that's what I've done on this one. I've rounded all my corners. And then along the four inch edge, you're just going to score at one inch on all of your four pieces. Once you've scored, you're just going to go ahead and burnish, fold and burnish them. Um, make sure you give them a good burnish. Okay, so you should end up with four pieces that are all kind of like L-shaped. So if you turn them over, so you've got valleys, take the first one and lay it down. So you should have your tab on the left and your flap on the right. You can do it the other way around if you want to, but this is just the way I'm doing it. So I need to stick to the way I know, otherwise I'm going to get in a muddle. If you take your second piece and on this flap here, on the mountain side of your flap, not the underside, the mountain side, you're going to put either some red tape or some wet glue. I personally prefer wet glue because it gives me more wiggle time. But if you want to use, you know, if you don't get on with wet glue, you can go ahead and use red tape. Just be really careful when you go to stick this down. You don't stick it accidentally in the wrong place. Right, I'm going to turn it back over. So we've got the valley and I'm going to line this cut edge up with that, um, the edge of that score line. And I'm going to make sure top and bottom it lines up. And I'm just going to stick that down now. OK, so you should end up with that, which is a very strange looking piece of card. So next you want to take your next piece of card and do the same again. So you're going to have it on the top of the mountain, which is this bit here, the flap. You're going to put some tape or wet glue on there. And then turn it back over and you're going to stick it so that this cut edge lines up with that crease line. So wherever the big panel is, it's that crease line you're looking at. Don't stick it onto one of these. It needs to be the furthest to the right, the furthest um, fold line to the right. And you're gonna stick that down. So you should end up with that. So we're gonna do the same again with this last panel. Again, put some more glue or tape onto the mountain side of your um, tab. And then we're going to take this flap and again fold that all down, line that up with that crease. Now make sure when you're sticking it that the bump of the score line, you can still see that. So that cut edge wants to go on the right hand side of that bump, but right up to the bump. OK, so I hope, hope you know what I mean by that. So you should end up now with that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fold it down. So if you just take this flap here and just open this up like that, so everything else folds, so it's like that basically, okay? And then you're going to put some glue onto there and then just this one flap is going to fold over and stick onto here. So we're going to fold that like that. This flap's going to come over and we're going to stick down. Obviously if you're using wet glue, just have to wait a moment for it to dry and then when you pop it up there's the start of your pinwheel card so then you, all you've got to do is decorate it so as you can see it's quite easy now when you move on to the six and eight sides 
um, you'll see, you can literally keep going. If you wanted to, you could really go. As long as it divides by two, you can go for it. Um, I wouldn't obviously go for two, two panels, because that probably wouldn't work, well, definitely wouldn't work. Um, four is the minimum, and then up to, I don't know really, your footprint obviously gonna, is going to increase the more you add on. Um, right, so then mats and patterns. For these main pieces here, you're going to need four mat cards that are one and three quarter by sorry that are two and three quarter by five and three quarter and then you need three pattern pieces that are two and a half by five and a half and one white piece that's two and a half by five and a half okay and we're going to go ahead now and we're just going to go ahead and stick these onto here Okay, so you should end up with that. So obviously just be mindful of which one you want the front flap to be and then which one you want the back flap to be. Okay, so your back is obviously going to be where you, your writing goes and whatever your best panel of pattern is, that's what you want on the front. So now for these pieces here, you're going to need four mat pieces that are one and three quarter by five and three quarter and four pattern pieces that are one and a half by five and a half. Okay, so there we have those little panels. So now we just need to go ahead and put our sentiment on the front and then whatever else decoration, you know, whatever other de decoration you want to put on. I'm not going to do a great deal of decoration right now. Um, I was going to try and do it, but then my mind went a little bit blank as to what to do. So, so I'm just going to go with the front greeting and then I'll probably add more butterflies on another time when I've got a bit more flame power going on. And I'm just going to go ahead and add in some pearls and some sequins. Um, these are actually from uh, Lucy Abrams' shop. And this was her Ukraine mix that she did um, last year, I think it was. And it's got little hearts and yellow and blue pearls and sequins. So I'm going to go and add some of those on. So there we go. So there's the semi-finished card. And obviously, as I said, I'm probably going to put some little butterflies. I'll probably cut some more butterflies out and just add them up on there. But that's the basic of your card. So, yeah, so I hope you liked it. Um, please go and check out Antonio Makes. Don't forget to use Louise 10 and you'll get 10% off your order. But, yeah, that's how it looks. So I hope you liked it. And um, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye.